How does internet violence, harassment, or cyber surveillance affect victims? One thing that we know about internet is that psychologically, it's a place where people can get information, get support from others, and express their feelings in, with a sense of safety. In this sense, the cyberspace is a great tool for helping people to cope with violent and traumatic events in their lives because we know that these exact same things, learning more information about an event or a situation, getting support, and being able to express one's feelings with a sense of safety is exactly what people need when they've gone through traumatic or violent situations. However, paradoxically, internet can also be the space where people are going to be victims of harassment and surveillance. In terms of the psychological effects of these types of traumatic, violent events, we can observe many forms of traumatic difficulties in victims. Specifically, a sense of wanting to now avoid cyberspace, which had previously been a place of support and well-being and exploration, specifically also of feeling as though they are constantly being watched, uh, controlled, and that the aggressor, be it uh, a multitude of aggressors or trolls, or a specific aggressor, is now entering into the privacy of their telephone, their tablet, their computer, and so can follow them not only in the privacy of their own homes, but also throughout their daily life. One of the difficulties for victims then of this type of violence is the sense of constantly being available for the abuser. And this idea of having to turn off one's phone, to turn off uh, one's tablet or one's the difficulties that the victims will also have is amassing the amount of information needed in order to show that they are being abused in the cyberspace. Often in terms of harassing messages, textos, SMS, uh, posts on different platforms, it's not one message in and of itself which is going to show that the person is being harassed, but rather the themes that are found in a multitude of messages. And in terms of this, one of the difficulties that victims are going to find is not only having to keep those, those messages and those posts on their platforms and on their telephones or, or tablets in order to then save them, print them out, and furthermore prove that they were actually on their machines. But on top of that, it's going to mean that uh, people who are going to look at these messages, such as the police, judicial experts, uh, judges, have to go through a plethora of information. And sometimes they simply do not have the time in order to do that, adding more and more to the victim's sense of being powerless uh, in order to prove that they are victims of harassment. In terms of cyber violence, when the violence takes on a form of surveillance, here the issue is the victim being able to show that her telephone or her accounts have been compromised. Uh, it's relatively easy right now to set up uh, surveillance of someone's phone, of someone's accounts, also someone's movement in their car, for example, with different elements that are easily available and that can be bought actually quite simply on internet. When victims start to talk about cyber surveillance, we have a large quantity of professionals, both psychological, uh, health professionals, judicial and social professionals, who are not aware that this type of violence can happen in the public sector and who are thinking of it more in terms of governments spying on each other uh, through cyberspace or businesses spying on each other. And so the victim tends to be perceived as being hysterical, paranoid, making things up, which simply adds to a sense that she's not credible. And this, again, gives victims a greater sense of being impotent, powerless in the situation and of being discarded, disqualified, and not believed. 